Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photolearningism. Tonight, we will pit raw therapy against Lightroom and see where the strengths and where the weaknesses lie. Let's do this. So once again, I'm Nate, this is Photolearningism. If this is your first time joining in, it's my hope that I'm building a community of learning through all these videos, surfacing the cheap or free art technology tools ranging from photo editors to video editors to photo management software to screen capture software. Please go back and check the other videos. Don't hesitate to comment and get involved in the conversation because I want us to be able to learn together, to explore art technology together, and make each other stronger through community learning. So thank you so much for joining in. I wanted to get into raw therapy versus Lightroom. If you're unfamiliar with raw therapy, it's a really fantastic uh, raw loader, and it has a lot of fully... Uh, I'll call them full fidelity features uh, built into the software where it can work as a standalone photo editor or as a transitional raw loader for GIMP and possibly others. I don't know if that's the only one. So coming right out of the gate here, let's just start looking at Lightroom because uh, I've touched on raw therapy before. Please go check out the videos to that. I'll put a card in that corner. <laughs> So right now we're looking at the web version of Adobe Lightroom, which um, it can do some things, but I've noticed that in comparing this with the desktop version, there are some significant limitations where it doesn't have the full tool set and um, the interface behaves a bit differently online, which is somewhat to be expected, but I've seen tools where they do a lot of work to mirror those interfaces and for that, yeah, could be, for, for me, that, that's a detriment. I don't like that. I want the same experience, whether it's online, whether it's desktop. I want all the same things so that if I need to get at it, wherever I am, however I am, I don't have to think which interface am I going to run into on which tool, which, you know, which, which way. <laughs> am I online? Am I in the desktop thing? You know, I don't like that. Also, I wanted to say, just if I can start off this way, the setup for Lightroom was unnecessarily complicated. <laughs> Adobe, if you're watching this, probably not, but on the off chance that you do one day, please, please, please take the user into consideration, okay? I understand you're a business, you're looking to make a living, but the process and the lengths that you have taken to, to make a very narrow pathway into your product is actually very discouraging to the point where I, if I wasn't doing this video, I probably wouldn't have pushed through it. <laughs> Having said that, let me just show you some examples before we get too far away because it was just, it was so much. On pictures, where did my pictures go? Here we go. So first thing I noticed is that after I had navigated through signing up for Creative Cloud, which to me that was kind of again unnecessary, where we're trying to use a tool and we should just have the same approach to other tools where you want to try something out, you download the software, you unpack it, and away you go. This makes you shoot through a lot of hoops through signing up to the Adobe Cloud, through installing Adobe Cloud, and then finally, finally, finally installing the product in the cloud suite that you want on top of all that after it's updated itself, which took a long time, by the way. And the first attempt I made to install Lightroom failed. It actually hung partway through. I had to kill it, start it over again, and I finally got it. But again, it was a lot of work just to open up the software and start testing it out. That, that was a bit much. So you open it up on the desktop version finally, and it warns you that they're going to collect data to help them deliver and improve their product. And while that concept is not necessarily unheard of, Microsoft is pretty famous for this, it's just one more thing where I had to question and say, well, you know what, guys, you should just focus on the product experience here because ultimately what this means is that they're collecting the behavioral information for marketing. They can say that they want to do this to make it better for you, but really that's what this is. All right. <laughs> so again, pushing that one aside, flipping over to the next point here. 
What I'm about to show you, keep in mind that this tool, this is one of a whole lot of different tools. This is not the tool in the Adobe Suite, but this is one, this is Lightroom. It has some, some limited function and some niche uh, functionality, which I'll touch on. There is a reoccurring $10 fee. Okay, and that pricing model, at least for me, is also a turnoff because that means it's an indefinite expense for as long as I want to use this tool for the foreseeable future <laughs> of the functionality of it. So that model really does not appeal to me. So we've got all that ugly stuff out of the way. Now let's get to some of the good stuff, all right? Because I don't want to paint this as like, you know, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. It's not that. That's just, these are some things that, I, that hit me up front that were um, a little pervasive. So digging in, we just had a quick look here at the web version. Let's get into the desktop version because this is actually very well built. There's some really innovative stuff put into this that I started playing around with and I was very impressed at how powerful and how easy it was to use. For example, the opening tools here with the editor, this is gonna mimic the online experience, but the rest of these tools you won't get. Uh, these are very intuitive to use. And this actually may look familiar for those of you who have used raw therapy or even dark ta table, uh, this layout where you have the collapsing or cascading uh, interface here to play with uh, what's what's going on. You do have color controls. You can do all the normal things that you'd expect to tweak uh, and enhance a picture coming into this. Um, you don't get layers. It's, it doesn't support that. Do go to Photoshop if you want to get that in the Adobe Suite. Um, it does have these nifty things that I just thought were really cool. It's this brushing idea. And let me show you what this does. First of all, you adjust the range of the brush by using the roller on your mouse. Brilliant, easy to figure out, and I don't need another control to do it. That's great. What you do with this is you literally paint onto the picture and you can control a lot of these things uh, with this, but you literally paint on the picture a section you want to adjust, and then that section you just painted on you can play with color enhancement within that section. That's really cool. Now, noting that you do have to be at a place where you like it where it is, because when that's done, let me just see, does it keep, actually does keep it. Okay, that's good. Because before, when I tried this out, I had trouble coming back to, to one in particular. So yeah, and you can adjust it later, so. I had some problems like uh, if I had drawn on top of it where it wouldn't let me go back to the one I had. So some learning curve probably on my part, but again, this is a really interesting feature because you can see how you can easily achieve some really cool things. Um, there's also these neat gradient overlays, which I'm playing with. That's what you're seeing in the background, where again, you can draw these onto what you're working with and you can map on these, these really neat color overlays. So play around with those a little bit. Again, you can get a certain look or achieve a certain uh, color spread by doing this. Um, and again, it's also compacting what I've already played with, so it does look a little funny here and there, but you can get the gist of what's actually going on here where there's a color gradient going on and it plays very nicely with the image. Essentially, it's adding another layer that is using an overlay approach. It's melding colors, but still giving you the control and maintaining the layer, almost like a little mini mask type of thing. It's really cool. So there is a healing function. I kind of skipped over that a moment ago. This, in my opinion, was not that impressive. Um, it's probably the least impressive tool of all the suite. Um, it can accomplish some basic touch up where if I wanted to be able to uh, clone something out here. I'm going to flip these around because it's working backwards here. If I wanted the ability to clone something out, I could do that with this tool. I found it to be a little bit clunky. And I think the reason they built it this way is so it could be, this could be somehow adaptable into a tablet version where you could kind of drag your finger across things and, and do that. I've seen this same approach 
in Snapseed, which is a very popular iPhone app uh, put out by Google. Um, it uses the same kind of idea, but I didn't like it in Snapseed because again, it's clunky and I don't like it here either. I just think it, it's too limiting an idea and I'd almost just say it's not even not even worth doing this because it's just so problematic to use. So that's my opinion on this. That's Lightroom. Again, I really do love the color control and your ability to literally paint on sections that you can manipulate. I just think that's genius, okay? That was a, a wonderfully innovative thing that, that Adobe brought into this Lightroom product. Let's contrast that over now to Raw Therapy. Now, I was able to get this somewhat similar. I can't, I couldn't figure out a way to get the gradient color spread, but I could get a nice range of color that I could adjust to my liking. I can play with kind of a, a, a vignette type of approach, which again is not full color, it's black and white. But again, I'm getting close to the same kind of technology and there's a lot more built into this tool that you get for free. So kind of have to weigh the purposes of what you're going to accomplish with all these things. Um, it is possible that you could get close to that layered look with the different colors by making multiple passes at this, saving it away, layering on top, you know, other, other colorizing. But again, this, this tool does a lot for free. I'm not going to jump through every feature. Um, a lot of the control that I used is in this color color tab here. And I use that to play with the uh, the toning of the color under the exposure, which um, I've shown this in, in other videos before, is using this, this graduated filter, which is ultimately how you can get that kind of effect of, of spread of color. This is a much better approach, I think, actually, to accomplishing that because you get a manipulative interface right on top of the image. Um, Adobe did have their own way of, of kind of sizing and doing things and dragging things around. This this really clicked with me for some reason. I, I really liked the way they, that it was built into raw therapy with this. There's a lot of different controls for tweaking things. Um, and again, this just goes on and on. I'm not going to touch on every single thing, but you can kind of already see with the lightness, with the contrast, how you can achieve a similar look. Um, and I, I would argue that you could actually get 99% of what you're going to get in Lightroom for free. So if you're looking for a place to begin, I'd say go with Raw Therapy, go with Darktable. Try these things out. The tonal control is very, very impressive. And there is a growing strong community behind this tool, behind Raw Therapy, that is constantly developing it and making it better. Um, and I know that Adobe has done a lot of work in their, their Lightroom product as well, but um, the difference is that you can figure this one out at your leisure without paying for it month by month. And when you hit a brick wall, maybe maybe at that point, it's worth considering then moving into Lightroom when you're ready to absorb that expense and get that added functionality and gain kind of this, I'll call it the pseudo benefit of moving in the browser and moving in other platforms because I don't believe Raw Therapy does that. Um, I do believe it bridges the gap between Windows and Linux, but you can't take it with you on your phone. So if that matters to you, then maybe this time to look at Lightroom and grab some of that impressive technology from there. But otherwise, my advice coming into this out of the gate would be try out Raw Therapy. Very, very impressive free tool. Can't go wrong with just starting out with that, right? So I hope that was helpful. There's a lot of different pieces of this. I focused a lot on Lightroom because those are all brand new things that we haven't really looked at in this channel before. Raw Therapy, I have touched on. Go watch that video if you want to get a better sense of the tools. I was trying to show how you could achieve a similar look here versus that, so I'm not going to focus so much on the tools here. But again, thank you for sticking with me to this point. I love it that you were here. I do hope you come back. Check out the other amazing videos we're going to do. Join the conversation. Leave comments. Please do subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if it was helpful. And I'll see you in the future. Thank you so much.